evening. I'm spot on weather meteorologist Matthew Euler and I'm going to take a break from the training video series tonight to cover some real-time weather and I'm going to provide a tropical cyclone Debbie update and I'm going to kind of show everything from the 12z model data today on Monday the 5th of August 2024. I took this nice picture, by the way, um, this evening. Um, I was out and about, and I got this beautiful-looking sunset here in Virginia Beach. So this was a nice little shot I was able to get, thankfully. Um, but yeah, this was a this was this was a beautiful-looking shot for sure. Um, but let's go ahead and go into take a look at Tropical Cyclone Debbie here. Uh, I'm going to start with looking at the modeling data. Now this again is based off of the 12Z model data from today, the 5th of August. 2024 and you know these models have been all over the place the past three days or so the past 72 hours with you know where is tropical cyclone debbie where's it going to go off the southeast coast of the united states so let's take a look and examine some of this models from the 12z output today i'll start with gfs here on the left by the way these graphics are courtesy of tropicaltidbits.com all right, so GFS over here on the left from 12Z run today, showing, and, and what I'm making the valid time for to kind of show similar comparisons, I'm making all of these model data charts I'm showing, the 12Z model data valid, forecast valid for 18 Zulu on the 8th of August, 2024. So this is what it looks like um, early this Thursday afternoon, according to the different models out there. Now GFS is here on the left, green of course being rain, and the yellows and reds indicate the heaviest rainfall. We have our area of low pressure here. This is Tropical Cyclone Debbie. And on the GFS 12Z model today, we see Debbie is located generally right along the southeastern Georgia coastline with a central pressure of about 993 millibars. Now I call GFS model the outlier because it's really the only model outside of the hurricane models that's depicting we talk about global models, it's the only global model that's really depicting this kind of scenario where you know it keeps it down further south over southeastern Georgia. And then I'm not going to show you this, but generally it's showing a track moving back westward. Okay. And so really with the case of the GFS, it doesn't really get back out over the waters off the southeastern coastline of the US, but instead it goes further inland to the west and makes a hard left turn. And again, it's the outlier because it's really the only model out of all the models, the global models that are showing this. Now over here on the right, I'm showing you the European forecast model from the 12Z model run today, the 5th of August, 2024. This again, the forecast is valid for this upcoming Thursday afternoon, the 8th of August, early afternoon. Now look at the, G, or the European model. It shows a central pressure of 984 millibars with Debbie, tropical cyclone Debbie, just basically coming ashore there um, across really close to the South Carolina, North Carolina border there. Uh, 984 millibar central pressure, so it's stronger than the GFS. Uh, we're looking at, let's see, that would be nine millibars deeper for Tropical Cyclone Debbie. So it would be a stronger system coming back ashore for a second landfall right on into that North Carolina, South Carolina border. Let's examine now over here on the left is the global environmental model. This is produced by the Canadians. Um, what we have is a much weaker system at early Thursday afternoon, the 8th of August from the 12Z run today on the Canadian. It's only a, basically a 999 millibar low pressure center. Uh, and, and the remnants of Debbie are inland over South Carolina at this point, but fairly close to where the European was showing it, making a second landfall. But it is a much weaker system. Um, the precip is not as heavy. There's a little bit of heavier precip over North Carolina being depicted this Thursday afternoon um, for the uh, Northern North Carolina area. So the Canadian here on the left is weaker than the European model, which I just showed you this one, uh, 984 low coming in on to make a second landfall there uh, on the European Debbie, 999 millibars, so, so much you know higher pressure there um, compared to the European. And then over here on the right, I'm showing you the German icon model this is also valid for Thursday, this Thursday afternoon, um, at about 14, 1400, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 
Um, the icon showing a 975 millibar low as Debbie comes ashore there just around that border again between South and North Carolina. All right, so out of all the models we're looking at so far, what are we noticing? Well, again, the GFS is way much further to the south and its projected track is continuing moving inland over across southern Georgia here. Um, so not really re-emerging and re-strengthening according to GFS. Over here on the right again, European to sum it up, 984 central pressure, a second landfall there along the uh, South Carolina, North Carolina border. And then over here on the left, the um, Canadian at 999 millibars um, with the remnants of Debbie inland overland, a much weaker look. And over here on the right, the German icon. Now I will want, I, I do want to say German icon is the most intense. You know, it just really depends on how long this system is going to be over the water. All right, when it, when it comes and reemerges off the northern Florida coast, how much time will this system potentially have to re-intensify? Um, and, and that's really going to depend on how long it's going to remain over the waters off the U.S. southeast coast. Um, I'm not so sure I buy into this deep of a low that the icon's depicting. I mean, it's depicting a 975 millibar low, which, uh, you know, I'm not so sure that's going to occur. Um, but... I will say with the ICON, out of all the global models, it has been the most consistent uh, over the past three days. Um, the European and GFS have kind of been going back and forth with their ideas. The Canadians have been doing the same thing. But the German ICON model here, this baby is like locked and loaded. And I mean, this thing has been showing the track right up the coast here, making landfall right there, um, anywhere from uh, Moorhead City, North Carolina, down to Wilmington. Um, the Wilmington area there, um, Myrtle Beach as well, right in that zone, Myrtle Beach to Moorhead City. This German icon model, the icon model has been doing an amazing job as far as consistency goes. Now let's examine the, the NAVGEM. This is the Navy Global Environmental Model, right? This is also for midday 12Z, and this is also a forecast valid for, um, it would be 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time this Thursday, the 8th of August showing a 974 um, central pressure for Debbie, just off the shore of South Carolina at this point, about to make a landfall at this point in time, according to the NAVGEM. And then over here on the right is the Japanese Meteorological Agency. This is the 500 geopotential heights, as well as the mean sea level pressure. So these dark solid lines, this is your mean sea level pressure. Uh, we have a 999 millibar central pressure for Debbie just sitting off of the coast of South Carolina. Very similar placement to the NAVGEM, by the way. The JMA and NAVGEM look very similar in placement. All right, so now let's take a look at the forecast weather maps for the 8th of August on the left and the 9th of August on the right. Now, these maps are produced by NOAA, the Weather Prediction Center. And so uh, basically, you kind of see who wrote up the forecast here in these boxes. Um, but in general, um, over here on the left, we're looking at, this is again Thursday morning, the 8th of August, 2024. We see Debbie, um, they've got a 996 central pressure for Debbie um, just offshore the South Carolina coastline. So it is over water at this point on Thursday morning. We also have the stall frontal boundary to the north. All right. And then over here on the right for the 9th, this will be Friday morning, this Friday morning, the 9th of August. And we have those, that frontal boundary stalled out just to the west, just to the west of Debbie, which has now moved inland and is starting to weaken, or that low pressure is filling. The central pressure has now risen from 996 millibars before landfall to 1,004 millibars. Whenever these central pressures rise, that means the system is weakening overall. And being that Debbie is removed from water source, its energy source is, is not really a surprise. Uh, over parts of uh, South, northern South Carolina there. Uh, what my concern is though, really, is heavy rainfall. And, and the reason is, and there's been, there's been plenty of cases in the past where you get a tropical system that kind of just comes up the southeast coast here, or maybe just off the mid-Atlantic in the past, uh, where you get a frontal boundary that just kind of stalls out. So why do, you, why do we feel that's important when we look at that? Well, a frontal boundary already is a natural boundary which promotes vertical lifting air motion in the atmosphere. So already right along any kind of frontal boundary, 
you have a forcing mechanism, which is lifting the atmosphere, that warm, moist air. It's lifting that air. And it's a lot of times that produces some very heavy rain shower activity. And make no mistake about it, we have a maritime tropical air. It's very warm, it's very muggy. Um, so, you know, basically right out ahead of this front. And then to compound the issue, we have copious amounts of moisture with a tropical landfalling system. All right, so that could result in some very, very heavy rain all the way from you know South Carolina through North Carolina up to Eastern Virginia. And depending on the track of the remnants of Debbie, this, this heavy rain could go all the way up in New Jersey and the Southeast PA and the parts of Maryland and, and working its way a little bit further to the Northeast. If we look at the latest satellite image here this evening on the 5th of August, 2024, we see the center of Tropical Storm Debbie has 45 mile per hour winds. Uh, it's currently situated um, generally over the, um, right on the Florida Georgia line here. Um, it is still over land, the center of circulation. Uh, we have a lot of convective buildup. We have a lot of heavy rain showers here with this orange coloring here. That indicates my coldest cloud tops on infrared radar or infrared satellite image. These are the coldest cloud tops associated with the heaviest showers and the oranges and these darker colors here. Um, those are moving already into South Carolina. And look at the radar here to match the satellite image. The radar image here on the right showing again the circulation center is generally is getting pretty close to Jacksonville right now. Uh, and then we have a lot of moisture, the counterclockwise circulation around this system. And I'll go ahead and draw that out for you so you kind of visualize it. But you know, if we had the low pressure center here around the Jacksonville area, we got all this warm, moist air that is rotating in off the Atlantic um, counterclockwise around the center of circulation, which would be right in there. For the excessive rainfall outlook now, let's take a look at that. Uh, what we see is we have some much heavier rain showers uh, forecasted there for really South Carolina, coastal South Carolina, up to coastal portions of North Carolina there, we have a higher risk for excessive rainfall. Uh, you kind of see the probabilities down here uh, issued by the Weather Prediction Center. So a high risk of excessive rainfall is at least a 70% chance in these high pink colors. Um, and then orange is moderate, which extends a little bit further northward along the coastal sections of North Carolina. And orange indicates a moderate chance of excessive rainfall, at least 40% chance. And then the yellow coloring is slight chance of excessive rainfall, which extends pretty much over Northeast North Carolina up to Southeast Virginia. And even the green marginal risk extends all the way up towards Boston, it includes New York City, Boston, uh, Newark, New Jersey, Washington, DC, and Baltimore. So this is the excessive rainfall outlook. This is for um, from Wednesday morning to Thursday morning over here on the left. Now over here on the right, we have Thursday morning to Friday morning. And notice the moderate color is extended further inland because we're expecting Debbie, the remnants of Debbie to basically move in this direction here. And you're going to get the heaviest rain where that low tracks. Um, and so you're gonna get plenty of moisture um, advected or transported northward into um, interior North Carolina up into interior portions of Virginia. We have a slight risk of excessive rainfall for parts of coastal Virginia. So this is gonna be the hot zone for very, very heavy rain shower activity um, between, this is again between Thursday morning the 8th and Friday morning the 9th of August. We look at the official track, the National Hurricane Center latest track off the 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time Advisory. Uh, we clearly see a, a situation where this thing just isn't moving very much. The S, letter S represents tropical storm strength and then the letter D represents a tropical depression. So you kind of see how everything is clustered, right? You see everything's clustered, right? Well, let me go and get back here to it, sorry about that. Uh, I want to draw it out for you or circle it. All right, everything is clustered right in this location here, um, generally off the South Carolina coastline, really. Um, so we go from 8 p.m. Monday, we looked at where it was right now, and then by 2 a.m. Thursday, it's, it's not moved a whole lot, okay? So this whole cluster of these letter S's represents tropical storm strength, and it, it is going to reemerge over water. Um, as of right now, the official hurricane center forecast is for it to remain tropical storm status and not increase to a Cat 1 hurricane before making a second landfall into South Carolina. 
Uh, but generally you see the track here. Um, over time, it's going to basically come inland at South Carolina, according to the Hurricane Center forecast, and then go make a right-hand turn north up into North Carolina, the interior portions of North Carolina, before recurving back to the northeast. Um, by 2 p.m. Saturday, it's forecast to be a tropical depression uh, right there in southern Delaware. If you look at the uh, rainfall forecast on the right-hand side, now this is the rainfall forecast from the Weather Prediction Center for Tropical Storm Debbie, and look at these maroon colors here along the coasts of South Carolina. Maroon colors denote 16 to 20 inches of rain forecasted. Charleston, you're in that. Um, Savannah, you know, you're going to get a foot to 16 inches on the latest forecast. Uh, the orange coloring up to Raleigh, Durham, and over to uh, kind of extending east, getting close to Hatteras. The orange colors represent 8 to 12 inches of rainfall. And then the yellow coloring up here in Virginia, Richmond, and Norfolk, um, it's 4 to 6 inches of rainfall. So yellow is 4 to 6 inches. And then 4 to 6 inches as well for D.C., and you also see like six to eight inches of rain up there forecasted for Philly. Um, so this is going to be a major slug of moisture that's going to move up the coastline. Um, this forecast covers the time period um, over the next five days. So this is from 2 p.m. today, 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time today, Monday, 5 August 2024 through 8 p.m. This would be through 8 p.m. Saturday to August the 10th. So some extensive rainfall, very heavy um, associated with the remnants of Debbie. Well, the ones here along the South Carolina coast in Charleston, that's going to be associated with Debbie's, you know, more direct impacts of Debbie as compared to further north. So I'm going to now break this down to the Hampton Roads, Virginia impact area. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Virginia, the Hampton Roads, Virginia impacts. Okay, um, hopefully you got a good look, even if you don't live in Hampton Roads, Virginia, you kind of see, you know, what is the rainfall forecast for your area? What's the storm track looking like? You know, here's your excessive rainfall outlooks. And then, you know, just kind of looking at things, you know, the forecast charts here by the Weather Prediction Center. Um, but I'm going to break it down more specifically to Hampton Roads, Virginia cities now. Um, so we are expecting in Hampton Roads periods of rain showers, and they're going to be heavy at times. Now, will these rain showers last continuously from start to finish each day? Absolutely not. Um, you have to realize with tropical systems, there's usually uh, bands of showers that kind of rotate in and out on quick, short order. And so I would expect that we'll have periods of rain showers. Again, this is not going to be an all-day washout, but this rain will be heavy at times when it does fall. So anywhere from Wednesday the 7th of August right through Friday the 9th of August. Uh, overall, expecting 3 to 5 inches presently. And I say presently because it really depends on the track, ultimately, of the remnants of Debbie. Uh, we are expecting breezy conditions with strongest winds basically coming in from the southeast off the water at 15 to 23 miles per hour sustained with gusts between 25 to 30 miles per hour on Thursday the 8th of August. And those winds are then going to become south-southeasterly at 15 to 25 miles per hour with gusts between 30 to 35 miles per hour on Friday the 9th of August. Again, this is based on the latest track of the remnants of Debbie as it moves inland on that second landfall and then turns north. Now, my biggest concern right now, in addition to the heavy shower activity, and you know, the breezy conditions aren't as much of a concern based on the way we see things right now. Uh, but the heavy rain showers are, and I tell you what, I'm also closely monitoring the risk of severe thunderstorms with possible isolated tornado spin-ups overnight Thursday night and Friday across portions of Northeast North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia. Um, and, and the real reason behind this is this track right here, the National Hurricane Center, this track on the left, I'm going to circle the area. Anytime you're on the east side of strong tropical low pressure centers, uh, you know, you're at risk of getting some severe thunderstorms. You've got a lot of wind energy in the atmosphere and you're also going to get some rotating or turning or spinning of those updrafts uh, if thunderstorms do develop in this very warm, moist, and stable air mass on the eastern side of tropical low pressure centers. So do not discount this possibility of risk of severe thunderstorms. Um, right now, the Storm Prediction Center, I checked their um, overall analysis for convective outlooks. Uh, right now, really not highlighting it yet, I don't believe. 
Um, but you know, they're kind of in a wait and see mindset as well on what the remnant low pressure track of Debbie is going to do or where it's going to go before they really start um, focusing on severe weather threats uh, over our area here in the Mid-Atlantic. And then this is my um, seven day outlook, my latest outlook. Again, just focusing on tropical moisture. I, I just label this tropical moisture because it really kicks in Wednesday, it's kicked in Thursday, and it stays here Friday. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday look like the wettest days of the week in association with the tropical moisture from the remnants of Debbie. Um, and then even some lingering showers in a Saturday morning. Timing of the shower and thunderstorm activity is subject to change. Uh, again, it just depends on you know the forward speed of Debbie. You know, when Debbie comes into the Carolinas and makes landfall, that second landfall, and makes that turn, you know, the track as well as the timing of when Debbie moves in is really going to determine the periods of when we see these showers and thunderstorms. So this is not an exact science. Um, this is very much subject, subject to change still. Um, as of the 12Z run, model runs, I was seeing AM showers for Saturday. And then after that, I tell you what, we have a cold front coming through across southeastern Virginia um, this weekend, and it's going to produce some glorious weather after we get through the stormy times. Uh, associated associated with Debbie. We got a front coming through. It's going to really lower those dew points and make air mass feel more comfortable and those high temps are only going to be in the lower 80s. Um, so that's all I got for now everybody. I just wanted to cover a tropical cyclone Debbie update, kind of give you the latest. Um, these models are constantly changing. I will say though today I am seeing more um, consistency as far as tracks of Debbie re-emerging over the warm waters of the Western Atlantic, they're off the Southeast coast. Um, again, I don't necessarily trust this GFS model and you know, the Hurricane Center is also not really digging or going with the GFS model as you can see by this track here. So um, we'll just keep an eye on things and uh, provide more updates as necessary, but I wanna take a break from my training series to bring some real time weather right to you. So that's all I got for now, everybody. Until next time, take care and God bless everyone.